Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers and this presentation is titled Memories of Working for General Tom Stafford at the Air Force Flight Test Center. Now as you probably know, he passed away yesterday, March 18th, 19, uh, 2024, at the age of 93. And uh, I'll tell you about this in a minute. Uh, even back in the 70s, we did not think he would last that long due to an issue, an event that happened on the Apollo Soyuz mission. But he was an amazing individual to work for. And when I was officer in charge of current operations at the Air Force Flight Test Center in the command post, um, that was in the main headquarters building. His office was a few doors um, to the right down the hall. Nice big office full of all sorts of memorabilia. You can imagine he flew uh, Gemini and Apollo spacecraft. So he, he had a few mementos in his office and it was Nice big office, what you'd expect a general officer to have. And the other direction was the wing commander, and I'm kind of in between the two of them. And basically, uh, if anything went wrong, uh, we had an emergency, a serious emergency or an event like that, I was the one, that was my position to coordinate the facilities, and I had direct hotlines everywhere. And of course, in that position, you got to know a lot of people all over the base, and um, you got to know the secretaries. And I worked with a lot of really cool people, and I should have asked for more autograph pictures, and I didn't, and that's unfortunate. But I asked for an autograph picture from General Stafford. And, of course, I asked through the, the secretary, and uh, she uh, said, yeah, I'll, I'll take care of that. And a few days later, she comes back, and she gives me the picture, and she says, now you need to know something about, about this autograph picture. And I go, okay. She says, he actually autographed it. And I thought, well... Okay, I thought that's how that worked. And you go, no, 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 no. Uh, they have a machine that will autograph the picture, and it looks like um, his handwriting and everything, but he doesn't actually autograph the pictures. And I, I guess this is fairly common now, and when you look at some of these shows where they analyze a picture to see if it was really autographed by the individual, well, back then I, I didn't know any better, and I just figured people autograph pictures. So she said, this is really something, because he actually uh, signed this himself. And... He was just a down-to-earth, I mean, I'm a captain. Actually, I was a first lieutenant at the time I was out there. And uh, if we'd have an emergency, I would have the wing commander on one side behind me and General Stafford on the other uh, uh you know, side behind me. So I've got a, I got a full bird colonel and a uh, general behind me looking over my shoulder. And the interesting thing about this job, and I, I mentioned this in one of the other videos, the two guys previously um, that held this job were both majors and they were both fired for screwing up emergencies. And this is the advantage of being in your 20s. You just don't know any better to be scared. And, and I really never was. Um, I just, I'd been a radio dispatcher for the sheriff's office and I was used to handling a lot of uh, things at the same time in tense situations and stuff like that. So it, it just kind of played in and, and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. And I, you know, coordinated activities when we had a problem and they sat back there and watched and uh, never said a thing other than at the end that, hey, that was a good job, but that was about it. So uh, fortunately, I never got fired. Now, if you ran into General Stafford in the Walmart, you might think he actually worked there. You just notice that nice, genuine smile he has there. Now, of course, if he was wearing the um, Apollo astronaut uh, suit, you would know that he was an astronaut. But, you know, if he's in normal civilian clothing, you might ask him where the hardware section was. He was just a nice, down-to-earth, affable guy that, that anybody could talk to. So this was back in the good old days, and we joked about that at the time because we thought, oh, the good old days are, are past. And one of the test pilots said to me, no, 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 no. You'll look back on this in the 70s, and you'll say this was the good old days. And it was. And, of course, this is the original historic sign that's been replaced with a with a much more modern sign. But back then, there was, in the when I was out there in the 70s, there was a lot going on. We had the major test programs, the A-10, the F-15, the F-16, the B-1, um, a bunch of little programs like the, uh, the F-5, things like that. Um, it was just an amazing time, and we had the shuttle approach and landing tests going on out there. This is when the shuttle was brand new, and they were just uh, dropping it off the carrier, uh, the 747, or actually the 747, of course, drops it, uh, and I explain that in another one. But uh, anyway, it was a real heady time. 
And a lot of people were uh, being selected, a lot of my fellow squadron people out there, test ops were being selected uh, to be uh, shuttle astronauts and that. And it, it was a great time. I mean, talking to these guys and uh, they just got selected. And of course, uh, they went on and, and had, you know, for the most part, great careers, except, of course, for the, 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 the two here uh, depicted who were on the Challenger. But it was a, it was a really great time. And like I said, I started out in the command post and uh, coordinating the test range and stuff like that. And later, um, I went. Uh, I was selected to be uh, officer, uh, the T thirty eight senior flight examiner at Wing Stanovell. So when you do that, because you're an instructor and examiner, you get to fly with kind of the what we'd call extremely senior people. And, I was just a uh, first lieutenant and a captain in the Air Force. I had no idea how the very senior officers uh, lived. And, um, you know, like when we went on a cross country, uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, they really got treated like uh, VIPs, of course. Uh, rank has its privileges in the Air Force, and it's, uh, you know, it's very delineated. Uh, you wear it right on your shoulders there. But um, I wanted to go to the Air Force Test Pilot School, so... You know, I had uh, interacted with General Stafford, and I thought, well, maybe I could get him to write a letter of recommendation for me. You know, um, I thought that that's a lot to ask, but the you know the worst he can do is throw me out of his office. But he said, yeah, yeah, that's good. And we had a nice little chat. I mean, here's a general officer talking to a captain about what it was like when he was a captain back in the day, and just kind of reminiscing. So that that was really kind of cool. And he writes me a letter of recommendation for the test pilot school. And um, that was kind of cool. Now, normally, you don't get to see these letters. They're supposed to be sent uh, directly uh, to the uh, test pilot school and put in your file and stuff like that. And there's a reason for it, because um, getting a letter of recommendation from a general officer, especially one who was the commander of the flight test center, uh, gets the attention of the review board, and and uh, and I knew some people who were on the, uh, the test pilot selection board uh, for the test pilot school, and they said, "Yeah, when this came across, uh, my letter came across, it it got uh, it got uh, it raised a few eyebrows." But the interesting thing, and and why um, you typically don't necessarily get to see your letter is because uh, one of the other guys who was on the selection uh, committee that I knew, my, my office was in the test pilot school in Stanavell. That, that's where we had this, the standards evaluation office. And right across the hallway from me was the records room where they kept all the applications for the, the test pilot school. And um, one of the uh, one of the captains uh, back there at the time that was uh, on it, a, a very significant individual I'll talk about in another presentation, he comes into my office and he says, Ron, I got to show you something. I got to show you this. So I go across the hall with him and he says, you know, you think that, you know, if you ask a general for a recommendation and he and he, he tells you he's going to write one and he does, you think that's a good deal, don't you? And I go, well, yeah, I would think so. And he goes, you know, not all general recommendations are um, necessarily good. And he shows me this letter. It was a, a B-52 pilot who was applying to the test pilot school and the general, the endorsement was was very brief. And it, it basically said he was a good officer and that his flying ability would not uh, be an overall direct uh, deterrent uh, or detriment to his uh, professional advancement. So it was kind of like, you got to be kidding. He's, uh, he's not saying he's a bad pilot, but he's, he, he just comes, uh, you know, a few words uh, short of it. So we, we kind of thought that was humorous. And, and the, uh, the other captain said, yeah. This guy thinks that he's got a general letters uh, recommendation here, and uh, he would have done better if this never got into the file. And, of course, flying out at Edwards was really cool. I mean, you were out there in the middle of things, and this is this is a check ride. In fact, it was funny. I was going through my records when I was doing some uh, research on, um, you know, uh, flying back in the day when I was out at the Edwards out at uh, Edwards and in the Air Force and stuff. And I came across uh, one of my check rides and I didn't, had even forgotten about that. But, you know, things like this look nice in your file and they kind of help with the, with the overall process. But like I was mentioning, one of the neat things about uh, flying 
uh, with very senior people is um, uh, they, they have their interesting little methods, okay? Uh, runway, this is a aerial view of Edwards. And runway 2-2 two, two there, uh, you take off going, you know, downhill. It's the other way, I guess. Uh, you take off going downhill there. Uh, and uh, that's the very common runway. Um, your radio reception, transmission, everything is great. You'll pull into last chance, you'll do your checks, and then you'll get cleared for takeoff. Well, runway 22 was the prevailing runway with the winds, and that's the runway we almost always used. Uh, the other runway, which is the receptacle for all you pilots out there, you can figure out right away that the receptacle 22 is four. Um, and that runway... Uh, the reciprocal, what we didn't use much at all. The winds very seldom were out of the east. And there was a little problem. There was a, a dead spot uh, down by um, the uh, the takeoff end of runway four. In fact, I could almost count on one hand the number of times I departed on runway four. But you had a real problem uh, with radio reception down there. It was hard to get your takeoff clearance. Um, and the other thing is... Um, General Stafford liked to taxi the T-38 indicating airspeed, and those of you who know about the T-38 know you're going fast, and he liked to go fast. And we'd get down there towards the end, and uh, he'd kind of look around, and, and a lot of times they flew kind of in the off hours because while well, everything was going on, it was busy and you were around, but on the weekends and stuff, that's when they tended to fly and went places and stuff. So it was pretty quiet, and he'd kind of look around and go, yeah, it's clear, let's go. And uh, yes, General. So we'd take the runway and away we'd go and tower, you know, we'd, we'd be able to get reception on the takeoff roll and we'd hear that uh, tower cleared us for takeoff. So that was good. You know, I mean, uh, the General owns the base. Nobody's going to give him a bad time <laughs> whatsoever. Now let's talk about the uh, his career a little bit. He, um, he flew two uh, missions in the, uh, the Gemini program. Uh, he flew Gemini 6A and Gemini 9A, and he also flew Apollo 10. He was one of 24 astronauts who flew to the moon. And um, I was uh, waiting outside of church. I'm in, I'm in the car um, with the little tube radio going, and my folks had gone into church. It was a Sunday morning. Uh, it was December 12th, 1965, and I'm listening to the countdown because they're going to go and launch. And, and, and they'd had a lot of problems with the uh, Agena rocket um, exploding on takeoff, a few things like that. So this mission had gotten delayed, a few things, but they were getting ready to take off. And, oh, by the way, they, they sat on ejection seats in the Gemini capsule, and these ejection seats were going to give you about a 20 uh, G transverse acceleration, uh, head to toe, head to toe, head to butt actually acceleration. And it was uh, considered so violently, uh, so violent of an ejection that they didn't test it with humans, which is rather unusual because they, they, they thought the uh, chances of actually using this would be very slim. But uh, I'm listening to the countdown and the engines on the Titan II rocket, you can hear them run up and then they shut down. Well, the clock starts, which means you're flying, because um, I'd heard the plug dropped out. It was an electrical problem. But, um, okay, they're sitting there on this rocket, and, okay, are we, you know, did we launch? Did the engines quit a second after we launched? Is the thing going to tumble over and uh, explode? Uh, by rights, Given the indications, they should have punched out. And this is this is how these people are cool. Uh, you know these these are a class of pilots um, that that are just absolutely cool. They're not they're normal people. They're they, you know they're not grandiose. They don't go around touting their story, telling about how great a pilots they are and stuff like that. The people usually are tooting their own horn. You you know pretty much right away that they probably aren't great pilots because they feel they have a need to do that. These are just down to earth people. And they were, and cool, okay, they're sitting there, they, uh, either one of them could have ejected, and they both decided um, not to eject, and that was the right thing, because uh, like General Stafford said when I was uh, just, you know, had a chance to talk with him, uh, he said, yeah, we, we never felt movement, we felt a little bit of vibration from the engines, but we didn't actually feel like the rocket had started to move, so since the seat also was untested, we decided just to set there. And it's a good thing that they did because they were able to fix the problem and, and pretty quickly uh, return the aircraft, uh, the vehicle, to service and have a uh, very uh, successful mission. 
Now, back in 1975, there was an Apollo Soyuz mission where they had uh, an adapter and they joined the two spacecraft uh, in flight. Um, they remained docked for 44 hours and did a few experiments. It was, it was mainly kind of a PR thing, us working with the Russians, that sort of thing. And this uh, picture is the his, what's noted as the historic handshake uh, between General Stafford on the right. And oh, he, he was the first general uh, to go into space, by the way, which is kind of interesting. And Alexei Leninov uh, during this mission, he and Alexei actually became very good friends. But it was on the return of uh, this mission of the Apollo spacecraft where they had an issue with a uh, position of the vents on the spacecraft. And they in, uh, ingested, the three crew members ingested a nitrogen tetroxide. And this is not a good substance. And basically they passed out and it, it, it did damage. Um, and... Uh, this was back in 75. He was center commander uh, in, in the late 70s when I was out there. And it caused him some medical issues. And most of us on, on the base uh, thought this was going to very significantly shorten his life. So as the years went on and he was still alive, I was very happy because this did not shorten his life because it was a very uh, unfortunate event uh, that could have proved fatal, unfortunately. But uh, you know, we all die of something, but living to 93 is not doing too bad. And this is a picture of, uh, you know, retired General Stafford being presented with the Medal for Merit in Space Exploration from the Russian President Dmitry Mendeleev on April 12, 2011. Now, it's great that General Stafford had a very good career. I mean, Gemini, Apollo astronaut, center commander. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people who have published, you know, about his life. He had an extremely distinguished career, was involved in a lot of very groundbreaking programs. And I remember uh, we had a TV in, in at the command post, and uh, President Carter canceled the B-1 program. It was uh, on, a, uh, on a speech he made uh, back on June 30th, 1977. And I remember General Stafford was there, and um, not not very happy <clears throat> at all about the uh, the situation, um, and and express that in you know appropriate uh, words. But of course later it was re resurrected as a uh, modified airplane. It was no longer um, highly supersonic, and it, it no longer had the capsule uh, seats because they weren't. Go it wasn't going to be such a high speed aircraft, so they could go back to ejection seats. And this is a bust of General Stafford that's in the Air Force Museum. And of course, again, this is this is the autograph picture that uh, that I cherish, and I, I wish I had actually asked a lot of people for a lot more of these. Uh, it would be nice to have. But anyway, uh, this this general had a very nice career. He was a down to earth guy, a guy. Uh, you could talk to, it didn't matter who you were, he would talk to you on a nice level, it didn't matter that, you know, his experience was so much vastly <laughs> more outstanding than yours, he would he would still talk to you like a, a decent human being, and, and uh, dare I say, equal individual, it was, it was really fun, he was a, a super neat guy, and I'm glad he ended up having a long life after all. Thanks for watching.